This is after the 1-1 draw. Mauricio Sarri has some interesting things to say. He says, we have to defend pushing forward and not running backwards. I don't want to see passivity. We did that better in the second half with more courage, more pressing to regain possession. It takes a while to change that mentality. All right, Mateo, I have to come to you now for this one because when you think of Juventus, I'm not saying that they're perfect, but after recent comments from Maurizio Sarri, it seems like he has a lot more to change and overhaul at Juventus than we expected. So there's this theory that Sarri is an offensive manager. He is. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you about Gianfranco Zola, his uh, assistant manager at Chelsea. He said he went to Chelsea to learn the defensive methods of Sarri. He said that the way that Sarri teaches the back line to move up as a unit, the second they get the ball, they all move up 10 yards or so. And the way that he structures them, he has drones in training to see the positioning of players. It's actually quite revolutionary. Leo Bonucci Hold came out and said he's never Hold seen anything like it. No, 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 no. The players no, no. are saying I, oh, nothing whoa, like whoa, it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, that By the way, let me tell you something. We were doing that in the 80s. That's oh, exactly what we were doing in drones. the 80s. This revolutionary nonsense. The drones in the 80s. Oh, well. Back in my day. <laughs> 4K drones I as well. Were, I think you were talking about what he was trying to do. No, but no. I'm it's... telling you, we were doing that in the 80s. And I'm sick of listening to all this nonsense that football's only just started with all these new managers. But doing exactly what we did in the 80s. But no one's saying that he's invented it. I'm, all I'm saying is that there is this reputation that Sarri's an offensive manager, but defensively, his Napoli side didn't concede much. I think he deserves a lot more credit. And the defenders now having a tough time adapting to it. Rugani, the defender, is saying, I'm having a really tough time right yes. now with this system that expects me to be very quick with the ball at my feet, trying to get it and give it very quickly, and then moving up the pitch, leaving myself exposed at the back. So it is going to take a while to change. We saw it even at Chelsea. It doesn't happen over overnight. <laughs> Stevie, you cooled Do down you know, over there? To be fair, I saw that coming. <laughs> All right, well, let's talk about Juventus's lineup. That in the meantime, Mateo, just give me your take on this. Yeah, so Iguain, I don't think he's going to start. I expect him to leave Juventus. Maybe Roma could be the destination. I think Federico Bernardeschi, the right winger, is the one who's impressed me maybe the most. I didn't think he'd be a starter in the best 11, but maybe he could carve out a spot for himself. We've seen him in the central midfield. We've seen him right wing. But obviously, Ronaldo and Dybala. How will Sarri use them together? He came out and said, I see Dybala as a false nine, so expect Dybala to take Iguain's place with Ronaldo playing more narrowly where he's so good in the air as well. That's a lineup that is most likely going to win Serie A. It's a very strong one. Maybe still one more addition in the midfield's needed, though. All right, so let's take on Juventus. Shall we have a look at Inter then and get pick your brain on this one? We're going to bring up the Inter starting lineup today. But honestly, when we talk about Inter now, we know that there's, there's a lot going on behind the scenes as well. And Antonio Conte, who, of course, came into this one, and, and people have been saying that he's sort of acting like he was back at Chelsea, you know, which right. is definitely not what everybody expected, considering the thought was he wanted to go back to Italy, wanted to feel right back at home. Now we're saying that, you know, Inter need strikers. They're playing Perisic up front. That's not the way to go. So, Matteo, what's your take on all of this? I'm going to name drop right now. Christian Vieri said that Conte, oh. toughest training session right now in Italy out of any manager, and it really does bring out the best in players, and some of the players just can't adapt to his style. Even Pedisic seems like might be out the door or at least not a regular starter. I am shocked because Pedisic I thought was one of the three most important players for Inter in the last few seasons and Conte saying he does not see Pedisic playing in that left wing back spot. He said I've asked him to do things which he has not been able to deliver. That is why we're seeing Pedisic now as a striker. I don't think he's going to start at striker. If Lukaku comes in, it would be Romelu Lukaku and Lautaro Martinez. So Pedisic, another one of the big players for Inter, maybe not figuring the best 11. I'm shocked by that. All right, well, let's just stick up in there. With, you mentioned Lukaku, so you know we have to go there. And I have to bring up another name as well. Mauro Icardi, we know exactly the hot mess that's been going on there. So any resolution to that, first of all, and then we get into Lukaku? Napoli might be trying to get uh, Mauro Icardi, and I think Juventus is going to wait till the end of the summer transfer window where they could try to pry him away for a heavily discounted price. What Icardi did is lose Inter tons, millions, and millions of euro. He was worth nearly 100, I'd say, last summer, and now I think his value's plummeted, not even half of that. So because of his antics, he played himself and acted his way out of Inter, and now he has no more future with the club. I think he stays in Serie A. I don't think he'd be a starter at uh, Juventus, but at Napoli, he could definitely lead their front line, and uh, he's a brilliant player. It seems like we've forgotten that. One of the mm. best goal scorers in Europe. And quickly, just Lukaku. Lukaku is, he, 
So Conte wants him. He's wanted him since he was at Chelsea. He thinks he's the ideal partner for Lautaro. Two players with very different characteristics. A big body who can hold up the ball. Maybe not the greatest passer, but still someone who can play with his back to the goal as a very physical striker. Conte has been adamant that that is the signing that he wants Inter and Suning, the Chinese ownership, to spend more money than they're comfortable with. He thinks Lukaku can score as much as Icardi. So let's talk a little bit more about Milan. So here are the odds to finish in the top four for the CDI in the upcoming season. So Milan's still there in there. And Matteo, this is exactly what they desperately need to do this coming season. But I see a little bit of doubt in that kind of <laughs> nod you just gave me there. So why is that? What are you foreseeing for them? So I'm seeing Serie A basically like this. The top three sides, Juventus, Inter, Napoli, are going to be in a league of their own. And then it's going to be basically a who's who of six or seven teams fighting for that fourth spot. The thing that goes for Milan, that goes well for them is they have to get out of Europe. So they're not going to focus on that. Maybe this could be a blessing in disguise for them that they only have Serie A to focus on. And Roma and Lazio have not gotten better. Atalanta with no depth has to now play in the Champions League and play in Serie A and the Coppa Italia. So they might be stretched a bit too thin. So that could be what bodes well for Milan. Not the fact that Milan have gotten substantially better, but that their competition around them hasn't really changed much and the top three forget about them I think it's going to be those top three and then the rest of those middle of the pack teams fighting for that fourth spot all right so you're feeling it I'm feeling it's it's difficult to get that excited right now for Milan because of the financial realities of the mm. club if you're not in the Champions League you're not going to attract top talent and this is a club that right now in order to buy has to sell it's not a club that can just spend lavishly and we saw what happened when they did two years ago that it got punished and they had to bow out of the Europa League because of that free spending spirit basically putting a down payment hoping you go to the Champions League then all of a sudden you're not in the Champions League and you owe a lot of money you're completely negative with your balance and you have to leave a European competition for more sign up now for ESPN plus